Rimworld, Hard, what can happen, right? Well, this, or this, or... Damn it! But luckily in this guide you will learn how to survive the first events in Rimworld. Oh, <laughs> really? Definitely, let's get started. So you are just doing your thing in Rimworld, you're stable, you're happy, you're fine and suddenly a small message pops up. A visitor has appeared and usually he has something to trade. So right click him and press the trade option. Be sure to use your best social pawn. Once they start interacting with each other you will see the trading menu. This contains a list with everything that is tradable at the moment. It also displays items you own but cannot be traded. You can also see the total amount of silver the trader has brought with him. And of course the amount of silver in your stockpile. Everything outside your stockpile is not counted toward this amount. The buttons on the left side you click to buy and the buttons on the right side you click to sell. At the top middle you can see if you actually are spending or earning silver. And of course when you're done, let's seal the deal. And we're back to minding our own business again, but holy cow, what's this? And yes, that is exactly what it says it is. It is a mad guinea pig. Some bonus info on the guinea pig, just for you. They have huge claws and sharp teeth. And when opportunity arises, they will find you. They will kill you. Unless, of course, you listen to me right now. Pause the game and press like. Damn it! I meant R. Press R. Pressing R will give you full control over your pawn. He will do anything. Yes, even fighting a guinea pig. This is the draft menu. Here you can toggle draft in itself. Toggle the fire at free will. They will shoot any hostile. The melee button to attack an enemy with melee fighting. And the ranged button. Covering this button will show the range of the weapon and you of course attack them with said weapon. When within range your colonist will shoot the target. And oh god yeah, they miss a lot. Although I am quite unsure if I would hit a running guinea pig in real life. Now it can happen that they actually come close to you. Then you pause the game, switch to melee and melee that pig. Next event. You can name your settlement and your faction and the best tip I have for you is do whatever you like. Alright, on to the next one. <gasps> it's happening. It's an actual raid. Alright, alright, everybody chill out. It is actually not that different from the guinea pig. Let's start by pausing the game and assessing the situation. Over here we see the threat that just entered the map. He is wearing some basic clothes and has a knife. We ourselves have ranged guns. Like mentioned in the quest or in the pop-up, they are going to prepare, so we are actually able to ambush them. And there we have it, our plan is made. The guy is holed up in a bunker, but if we get close enough we would definitely get some shots in. And after a few hits the enemy is way slower and we can definitely take some more risk. Let's move one of our pawns a little bit closer for a better shot. Actually just move them both, he's really slow. And he goes down, our first victim. Now we can have several options, we can leave him here, we can capture him, or we can kill him ourselves. But before that always, always, always take off his clothes. And yeah I know, the clothes contain bullet wounds, blood and even maybe some other shit. But he didn't die in them, so we can use them. Once they actually die in the clothes, it is tainted and not usable for sale anymore. And there we have it, victory! So onto the last things, these are the bills. The bills are basically production orders. And at every bench you can set these. Let's start with the butcher table. Click on it and press the bills button. Then this menu appears, let's add a bill. As you can see over here we only have two options, either butcher creatures or make kibble. And since we don't really like kibble, let's just butcher creatures. We can choose to only do it several times, to only do it until we have uh, X amount, or just do it forever. And that is the option we're gonna use right now. In the right bottom corner we can adjust the radius where we get our ingredients and we don't want them all over the map. We just want the meat from the freezer, so we're gonna decrease the radius to make sure they won't get meat everywhere from the map, but only from the freezer. I know you can also assign a stockpile, but I usually do it like this. 
Then one little change we are going to drop on floor so they can keep working as fast as possible. To go over this one more time, we will also set a bill in the electric stove. As you can see, we have a lot more options over here. At the top of the list, I always put the cook fine meal option. We are going to set this up as follows. We choose to make these meals until we have six of them. Then in the details, we're going to make a small adjustment. Over here is the pause when satisfied option and we're going to check that and we're going to put it to two. What this basically means is we are going to make six meals. They can eat them all day one until we have two left and then they will continue cooking again. However, fine meals require vegetables as well as meat. And since we don't always have both, we're also going to set up a bill for simple meals. As this is below the fine meals, this will get treated second. So fine meals will always have the priority and those get eaten first as well. So simple meals are a backup. And we'll make sure we always have 10 in stock. Check the pause when satisfied again and we'll put that on three. So then once there are three left, they will start cooking again. And we're also minimizing the radius that we get ingredients from. A neat little trick most people do not know is if you press shift and click then you up the bill with 100 and if you control and click you up the bill with 10 items. In the next episode I will go a little bit more in depth and we'll check the schedule and assign tab. Hope to see you then. If you want a notification of course take the little bell and until next time. Bye.